since Never Ending Nightmares is a horror game at its core, I spend a lot of time thinking about horror and how to best terrify, disturb, um, horrify the audience, the, the people who are going to play the game. And it's, it's surprisingly tough. Um, certainly before I started on uh, Never Ending Nightmares, I thought horror probably be pretty easy because you look at a horror movie, they're pretty formulaic, but in general, even the, the relatively formulaic ones are, are mildly entertaining. I mean, I watch most horror movies, but I think to really create good horror is, is very difficult, and so certainly, um, to me, The Shining is sort of the shining example of of a masterfully crafted horror movie, and certainly Silent Hill 2 is is my favorite horror game, although I, I really enjoyed the, the Fatal Frame series, and, uh, well, Deadly Premonition is awesome, but not exactly a horror game. Um, but, I mean, there's plenty of great horror games and, and great horror movies, but what about them makes them so great. What is the key to horror? And I think this is something difficult to define and difficult to capture. And, well, firstly, if you were interested, I would strongly recommend reading uh, Chris Pruitt's um, Survival Horror Guide blog. I think that's what it's called, but it's it's really been helpful to me trying to understand horror in games and how how to craft it. But I think part of the, the secret to horror is the tension. And so it's not as much about the horrifying images as much as it is about creating that tense feel where the person playing or watching doesn't know what's going to happen, or they do know what's going to happen, but they're dreading it. So a good example, and, and uh, I know Hitchcock is the master of suspense and not horror, but let me just read this quote here. Hitchcock said, There's no terror in the bang, only the anticipation of it. And so I think that sort of speaks to, especially with suspense, is that the build-up is more important than the delivery. And so one of the things, if, if you read a lot of H.P. Lovecraft, he leaves everything up to your imagination. I, I mean, well... There's some descriptions of these terrible creatures, but usually I I honestly can't make heads or tails of it. Like, I don't really get a picture of these, you know, starfish hand things with globes for heads, and I don't know. It's all confusing, but w rather than creating or painting a clear picture, he spends most of his time describing how awful it is, how unimaginably and unspeakably terrible it is, and and how terrifying it is, and how much it drives you crazy, and he can, and the characters can barely speak about it. It's so horrifying. So I think to truly craft a, an amazing horror game, it's it's almost the spaces in between the horror that are the most important, and. And it's very difficult to create that tension because really what you're doing is you're letting the player or the viewer for movies imagine what's most horrifying to them and then that's sort of what they expect to happen. If you look again at The Shining, there's very little horrifying things. There's, you know, an elevator of blood and a few ghosts and a few scenes, but it's really just about the the mood and and the the feeling that you get and and the the fear and certainly I think it, it's helpful that it sort of follows a small child who's very vulnerable and and you sort of identify with that. So I think horror is very difficult and certainly I it's it's proving to be more difficult than I expected when I started the game, but.
I think there's definitely a lot of stuff out there, and certainly I've been essentially researching horror, reading reading books about horror, and reading horror books, and watching more movies, and playing more horror games, and just to try and get a, a feel for it. And certainly I think if you're doing game design, research is, is a great thing. There's so much information out there, so many ideas that you can can put together and and you know sometimes you get a, a a cool idea from something and then that turns into an even cooler idea so I I don't know exactly where I'm going with this but I just thought it'd be interesting to to start talking about what it takes to create a compelling horror game because I think it's easier to say what what a compelling action game is or what a compelling um, puzzle game is, but but horror is is almost less about the the gameplay and more about the mood and and the tension, which which is very tricky.